All right, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to take, create some loose connections on a shunt DC motor. So you can see that I have uh, a loose connection here at my positive supply. My next one I'm going to do is a loose connection on my negative supply. And then I'm going to create a loose connection uh, and kill current going to the armature. And then finally, I'm going to kill current going to the shunt. So at each individual spot, I want you to, to right now pause the video. Uh, jot down the same diagram and try and figure out where the motor is going to either stop so come to a complete stop or where it's just going to lose its mind and go faster and faster and faster and rip itself apart so again in my class we play this game bomb or no bomb you've got to tell me where the bomb is going to be created anytime that we wire something up we need to look at first whether it's wired properly or whether we've created the potential for a bomb, or if we have a loose connection, if a bomb can be created. A bomb meaning that this motor uh, can just go faster and faster and faster, and then basically rip itself apart unless we turn off the power to it. Let's take a look in the, the shop and let's slowly go through. Uh, each of these opens at A, B, C, and D and see if we can determine which one is gonna create the bomb. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, create some opens here on the shunt motor. So uh, let's see, let's take out uh, A. And A was the feed to uh, everything. So A would be this guy right here. So let me just switch these guys around. This is my feed from my source. So we'll turn this motor on and I'm gonna take away the feed to both of the electromagnets. And obviously that kills the motor and the motor comes to a stop. A lot faster because, like lots faster stopping because um, the series was going so fast, right? The shunt wasn't going as fast without a load. Okay, so that was A. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at B, if we take off um, the return. So this is our return here. Again, I'm wearing gloves because every motor is a generator and I do not need to be into a generator circuit. Okay. Again, if we take out B, that would be the return for both the electromagnets, for the shunt and the armature, and the motor just comes to a stop. Okay, beautiful. Okay, that leaves us with, let's see, C. C would be the, the feed to just uh, the armature. So I'm going to feed the shunt winding here, right? but I'm going to take away the feed to the armature. When I take away the feed to the armature, it comes to a stop as well. Well, that's no fun whatsoever. Everything just seems to stop. There's no sparks or anything like that. Bringing my feed back up to the armature. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one of the shunt winding terminals. And then we're going to get a bomb. Okay, have a look. Okay, so it's running perfectly fine. We saw that it opens on any of the other connections, the motor just came to a stop. But if we have a loose connection here on the shunt and all of a sudden the shunt lets go. Oh, okay. That's crazy. This goes faster and faster and faster. Maybe you can see that there were sparks just flying out of the, the commutator there. Let's try that again, because that was pretty cool. So again, I'm wearing gloves because there is a disgusting voltage being generated on that guy. So I'm going to remove or create an open on the shunt winding. What I also want you to see is that when I put this terminal back in, I'm gonna wait for a while for it to slow down. Um, but I, once I put this terminal back in, you'll hear a braking action once I, because I'm gonna keep the power, um, I'm gonna turn the power on, then turn the power off, and then I'm going to uh, replace this, and you'll hear a little braking action we'll, we'll deal with in a bit. Okay, so it's running perfectly fine. We create an open on the shunt. It just goes faster, faster, faster. Take this terminal and listen to the motor. There's a braking action. 
the brake the breaker to that motor is off there is no supply whatsoever to that DC motor but by putting that terminal back in I'm getting a braking action as well so we got to figure out why that motor is taking off as soon as that shunt winding opens up okay so we found that uh, at A B and C opens at any of those points made the motor stop and it seems like if we disconnect the armature then the motor just comes to a complete stop but the last point at D where we had that open on the shunt then the motor took off and we had all that arcing and sparking happening on the commutator so let's just briefly talk about why that actually happens uh, if you're watching this from my class then stop the video here if you haven't been to this lesson it's a lot easier or a lot more fun if you try and figure this out in class rather than just getting the answer right here you can come back to this later on for the explanation so the reason why when we have an open on the shunt and in this case the series isn't in there right this series winding is not connected whatsoever so this guy is not in there at all but when we have an open on the on the shunt you would think that the motor would just come to a complete stop because we need to have uh, both these magnetic fields right we need a north and a south and we need a relative north and south here in order to get rotation on this machine if we were to disconnect this shunt winding there then you would think that this north pole would just disappear and that south pole would disappear and then how would you get rotation on the machine but we've seen that when we have that open on the the shunt here that the motor just takes off and it goes faster and faster and faster so the reason for that is twofold you would think that all of that magnetic field disappears but remember that there's a little bit of residual magnetism so there's still some residual magnetism that's held on the field poles so that's how we get that Kind of repulsion here between these two points and the motor keeps spinning so that is one thing here is due to residual magnetism on the field poles can't spell today sorry guys And that's crucial because we need to have these two magnetic fields pushing against each other in order to keep that rotation. So why does the motor keep going faster and faster and faster? Well, initially, when the, the shunt was set up, we had a large magnetic field that was going across like this, right? But as soon as we lost that shunt field, then we lost a large part of that magnetic field. So this magnetic field provides us with the counter EMF with the armature spinning through there. Then we're getting a lot of cutting action of the armature conductors through that magnetic field. And it's generating a lot of counter EMF on the armature. If we then dissipate that magnetic field, then there's still, you know, a small magnetic field left over. There's a massive magnetic field happening on the armature now because there's less magnetic resistance. There's less cannery EMF happening on the armature. Because we've reduced the shunt field's magnetic field, there's less cannery EMF being developed on the armature and more current, a disgusting amount of current can now flow through the armature now. So this magnetic field has dissipated, but it's still there. And this magnetic field is now massive. Right? This is a huge magnetic field because we have a disgusting amount of current flowing through the armature now. And the reason why there's a disgusting amount of current flowing through the armature is because we have reduced the shunt field, which reduces the cannery EMF, which reduces the magnetic resistance, and allows a lot more current to go into the armature. Now, as the motor spins faster, it's definitely going to develop cannery EMF but not as fast as the current is rocking into the armature. So this motor is going to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Because we have so much armature current, we've got that armature reaction where the neutral plane has shifted and now we're getting basically blue flames happening on the brushes here because these were placed 
at the neutral plane where there was minimal generated voltage here. Now there's a large voltage here because the neutral plane has now shifted over. And now we're getting a lot of arcing and sparking at the brushes. So the motor takes off due to residual magnetism on the field poles uh, and reduced shunt field. We'll say basically reduced cannery MF from that shunt field, right? So it's twofold. There's still residual magnetism on the field poles. When this current is taken away, you still have a residual magnetism here, which allows us to get rotation. This magnetic field has dissipated, so there's less cannery MF, and so a lot of current is now going through the armature and it goes faster and faster and faster. And unless you hit that uh, breaker, it's just gonna rip itself apart. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Uh, the next one we'll take a look at will be the compound motor, and we'll do the same thing. We'll look at how to reverse that compound motor, and then we'll look at loose connections on it as well. Thanks very much.